It's time for another Dice Tower Review with John Richard. Howdy gamers, greetings from Indianapolis, Indiana, the gaming capital of the world. It's time for another board game review with me, Indiana John. Today we're taking a look at a deck building card game called Warring Kingdom. This is designed by Harry T. Gao, and right here in the box it says deck building meets player interaction, which that's very exciting because ever since Dominion came out back in 2008, everybody's been looking for what is deck building 2.0? What's that game that's gonna do deck building a little bit differently? So this is a game that is about deck building, but it's also about combat. You're playing a, a king or a lord of a, of a castle and of a kingdom, and you're building up your army and you're trying to defend Defend your castle from oncoming attackers while then sending your army out to try to destroy your opponent's castle. So uh, this is a game that's going to use a deck building mechanic but will possibly use it in a slightly different way. So let's take a look at the setup and gameplay of Warring Kingdom and as we do let's see if we can answer the most important question in gaming which is, is it fun? <laughs> So for the setup of Warring Kingdom, you're going to have a supply area in the middle here that you're going to set up ahead of time that everybody will have access to for cards to buy. Money cards or some common cards here. Then interestingly enough, there's these four other decks of cards, uh, civilians, soldiers, weapons, and merchandise. Um, that you're uh, during your buy phase, you're going to be able to pull some cards from those to have some other shopping options. So we'll talk about that in a second when we get to the buy phase. So you'll set this up in the middle and then you'll set up each player area. Now the focal point of each player's play area is their castle, which they're trying to defend. And each castle has a particular number of uh, hit points, there's 23 health points. Uh, if you want a shorter game, you can actually turn the card over and there's the aged castle, which has only 11 hit points. Uh, and then there's some rules associated with the castle. Uh, these are all the same for every player, um, it says this is your home. Um, you're going to put this uh, face up in front of you and then all of your cards that you deploy are going to be in, in front of this card. Uh, this card is also going to grant you three coins and five cards at the end of your round. It says at the bottom, you win the game if you conquer another player's castle, protect yours at all costs. And so this castle card is going to go in front of you right here. And then in front of your castle, there's sort of an imaginary grid of um, 10 cards. So it's like a five by two grid of cards. It looks like this. Um, that's going to be in front of you. And this is going to be the places where you can possibly place um, troops. So in any kind of civilian or um, army uh, soldier troops that you want to. So you got to kind of keep this in your mind, in your head, that this is what your board looks like, although it's kind of invisible. So what you're trying to do in this game is you're trying to build up an army in front of your castle to defend your castle and also to be able to mount an attack against an opponent's castle. And the castle is always going to be in the middle in the column three here. Um, now in addition to uh, getting your castle, you also get your starting deck of cards which consists of four copper cards, three town guards, and three beggar cards. So you're going to take those cards, shuffle them up real good. That'll be your starting deck. You're going to draw five cards out of that, which will be your opening hand, and then you begin the game. Um, so let's go over a turn in Warring Kingdom. Now the first thing you can do in your turn is what's called act, or take an action. And that's where you can use a card from your hand, or a card that is already deployed on your board, and you can perform the action that's associated with it. So uh, this one, for example, says, action, discard two income cards from your hand, which are money cards, and then return this beggar to the supply pile and gain a warrior. So this is a good way to kind of upgrade your beggars into warriors. Now if you use this card from your hand, then you'll have to discard it at the end of your turn, or in this case, you're actually gonna return this one to the, um, to the supply pile. Um, if it's something that's already on your board, then he'll just stay on the board um, and you, you, know, you don't have to discard him. The next phase is the deploy phase, and this is where you can actually put cards uh, in front of your castle. It's going to defend it. Um, so for example, you can play one card from your hand and deploy that out there. And then it says you can um, also deploy any number of um, equipment cards. So I can only put one on the board, but then let's say I want to give this guy an axe. Well, then I could you know, give him this axe, which is going to give him like a plus two, plus two to his attack values there. So one card uh, can be deployed, one uh, person, I guess, and then as many uh, pieces of equipment as you want. That's the deploy phase. 
Now the main meat of this game is the attack phase, and um, you're going to probably spend a few turns building up your army here, but eventually you're going to want to go after another player. So you have uh, several phases in the combat uh, phase. Uh, there's the planning uh, section, which is where you declare your attack. You pick who you're going to attack. Uh, in a four player game, it has to be someone who's adjacent to you, uh, but otherwise you can just select whoever you want. And then uh, once the player has been chosen that you're going to attack, that defender is then going to get a chance to rearrange their cards. So they get to kind of move cards around if they want to based upon what they see is coming at them. Because you're basically going to be lining up your uh, cards, the attacker's going to line up their cards against the defender's cards coming from this direction so that the columns line up. And so those the columns will be attacking each other, kind of a rank and file thing. So the defender's going to rearrange their cards. In response, the attacker is then going to get to rearrange his cards based upon what the defender did. So there's a little bit of sort of a cat and mouse here. Oh, we're going to move this guy over here now, and uh, I think this warrior needs to come up here, and let's uh, move this guy over here. So things like that. And so then uh, after that happens, uh, the attacker gets the chance to deploy. So he can actually put more cards out on the board. Uh, let's you know, put this farmer out here. Yeah, he might help. You can put other cards out on the board to build up the army. At that point, then, it goes back to the defender, and the defender, this time, cannot rearrange their card, but they can choose to deploy additional cards onto their board. So after this sort of back and forth, then you're going to have your armies all set. If you have any any uh, front rows that are uh, spaces that are empty, you're going to slide those up to the, the front so you have a nice clean front here, and then you're going to um, move on to the execute phase. Now the execute phase is we're going to roll these dice. We've got some nice neon dice here in the game. Very cool. You're going to roll all five of those, and those are going to determine which columns are going to attack during this uh, attack step. And you're just going to go one through five here. So this is a two here. There's a couple of threes. There's a five, and then there's a six, which we'll talk about in a second. So this means that in this particular combat round, number two is going to attack once. The number three column is going to attack twice, and number five is going to attack once. Now, the defender is going to be doing exactly the same thing, and they're going to be putting their dice um, onto their particular columns. At that point, then, you're going to resolve each of these columns. And this is where it's kind of an interesting thing where you're going in kind of in two directions at the same time here. Yeah, same, like two directions. So this column is going to attack first if, it, if it's uh, got a die there, one. And then uh, at the same time, the defender's number one, which is over there, is going to attack. And so we, we go one, two, three, four, five. And at the same time, from the other perspective, we're going one, two, three, four, five. And those will resolve each other. Uh, and, you know, it's a very easy uh, mechanism as far as how the damage resolves. Um, Let's take a look at that for a second. Now you can see that this warrior card here has two values, a four and a five. These are both attack values, but it depends on whether you're the attacker or the defender. If you're the attacker, then you're going to be dealing four damage to the other person's uh, life points. And if you're a defender, then you're going to be dealing five damage to the uh, attacker's life points. So they're both kind of attack values, but one is called like the attack attack value, the other one's sort of the defensive attack value. So as you're resolving this, if you're able to deal enough damage to a particular card so that it, it uh, depletes their life total down to zero, then that card is going to be injured. And at the end of the, the uh, combat round, this card is going to have to be discarded. So we'll just leave that there for a second. This resolution will continue, like I said, from left to right and from left to right from the other perspective. And then we have what's called a cleanup phase. And this is where we're going to apply critical hits. Now I mentioned that we rolled a six here and there's only five columns. The sixes are for critical hits. And so so any uh, card that has been injured during the round, uh, so for example, the opponent here, uh, the defender, if they had rolled a six, then they could say, hey, this warrior here that's injured, instead of you discarding him, I'm going to kill him with a critical hit, and now this card is going to have to go back to the supply. And so the player will actually have to buy this card again. So that's a much more devastating blow. So you'll apply those critical hits with the sixes that are on your dice. Uh, then uh, there is a, you're going to basically do a cleanup where you're going to return uh, any of the killed cards to, the, to their particular supply piles. You're going to take uh, cards that are injured and put them back into your discard pile. Um, and then you're going to kind of reset damage on everything. So any damage that didn't completely kill something, it'll reset. And then you get the opportunity to maybe do another combat round. In order to do a second combat round, the attacker has to discard two money cards to be able to do another round of attack. And if he's able to do that, then you basically will restart this and do it all over again. Um, and so then uh, the idea, though, is that you're trying to eventually cut through the defenses here in the middle so that you can attack the castle. Because like, like I said, the, the Damage resets and there's 23 life points on the castle. So you have to be able to build up enough of an army to be able to kind of drill through the middle there and eventually deal 23 damage in one uh, combat round to this castle. And so that's a uh, 
that's sort of how the, the, the game works. And then the idea is that you're just trying to, to drill through and eventually destroy that castle. So that's the combat phase. So after the combat phase is the pay phase, and this is where you have to pay upkeep costs to keep cards on the army, uh, in your army, in front of you. Um, for example, this archer has a upkeep cost of two, and the farmer has an upkeep cost of one. So you have to discard money cards equal to that amount in order to keep these cards on the uh, table in front of you. If you aren't able to pay that, or you're unwilling to, then these cards are gonna come off the board, and they're gonna go home and go, uh, and go into your discard pile. So that is the upkeep phase. So they're gonna get kind of expensive. You want to make sure you, uh, you keep track of how much money you need in order to keep your army on the board. So after the upkeep phase or pay phase, uh, you're going to have your buy phase. Now if you chose to attack during your turn, then you actually have to skip your buy phase. But if you didn't, then you'll get this buy phase where you'll get to spend cards out of your hand, spend money out of your hand to buy any of these cards. There's some standard money cards, copper, silver, and gold, um, very similar to like Dominion. Then you have things like beggars, town guards, and warriors that you can buy, just some basic uh, character types there. And then you're gonna select one of these decks of cards, and let's, for example, take the weapon deck, and you're gonna take three cards from that, and you're gonna put them face up here. And this is gonna give you three other shopping options for you on your turn. So we have the short bow, spear, and strong bow. So you can um, select any of these cards that you can afford. Uh, anything that you don't select from here will get discarded into that deck's uh, corresponding uh, discard pile. So then after you've uh, bought your, um, your cards, if you wanted to, then the last phase is the discard and draw phase, which is very typical to most deck building games. You're gonna take any cards you have left over in your hand and discard them to your discard pile, and then you're gonna draw back up to five cards. If your uh, deck is exhausted, of course, you're gonna take your discard pile, shuffle it back up, and then draw five cards from that. So this is the way things get recycled into your deck, a la every other deck building game. So the game is gonna continue uh, until uh, we're doing all of these phases, uh, doing your actions, deploying, uh, maybe attacking, doing your pay and your buy, and your discard and draw phases, until one player has built up enough of an army to be able to mount an attack against another player's castle and has enough um, uh, power to destroy it. Um, and at the moment that one player destroys any other player's castle, uh, that player is the winner of Warring Kingdom. So that is Warring Kingdom, a very interesting take on the deck building mechanic. Um, what did I think about this game? Well, I did like the fact that it's a, um, it's kind of almost like a tactical miniatures combat game and a deck building game put together because you're putting things out onto the board and building an army and then actually sending that army out to specific locations. So I've never really seen a game that does quite, it does things quite like that uh, with a deck building mechanic before. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, one thing that I, was a real challenge for me in this game is that the economy I think is very tight. It's really hard to get enough money to buy the powerful cards that you need. And so I found that the engine building in this game was very slow and kind of difficult. Um, and you know, you're also spending all of your time and money building up this army uh, to, to get ready to attack your opponent. And then you find yourself at mer the mercy of those dice rolls. Uh, and you know, if you didn't roll any threes for that middle column, then you might find yourself uh, kind of frustrated and not being able to do what you want. Uh, now the rule book says that they, the dice rolls are meant to simulate the uncertainty of war. And I guess that sort of makes sense, but for a game like this, I, th I found it to be a little bit too frustrating. Um, and so for me, this was just kind of an okay game. Um, I, I really like the attempt and I feel like the this sort of idea of using deck building to build an army uh, to be able to send that out to attack someone else I think it's really good I just think that the, it gets a little bit too crunchy and the rules get a little bit too there's just a little bit too much going on um, and I think it needs to be light I think a deck building mechanic is sort of uh, more conducive to a light game I know there have been games like a few acres of snow that use deck building for like a more of a war game um, maybe that's sort of what this was going for but uh, for me this was just kind of an okay sort of middle of the road game. Uh, now if you do like uh, tactical combat games and you like deck building and you're also not uh, uh, w willing to uh, ex uh, deal with a little bit of a learning curve, this may be a game for you. But uh, for me it was just kind of just a middle of the road game. So the answer to is it fun is for me it wasn't that much fun uh, but it might be fun for you. So if you're interested in it, uh, feel free to check out Warring Kingdom. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs>